Beef cattle from the southwestern United States typically enter one of three supply chains. Calves destined for market spend much of their lives grazing, first on southwestern rangelands where they are born, then on grass or wheat pasture at an intermediary stalker operation. At this point, they're ready for their final fattening phase, called finishing. Many are sent to feedlots in the southern plains to be fattened on a high-energy ration. Alternatively, cattle might be finished on grass or other forage, either in the northern plains or in the southwest. In this video, we will compare the environmental impacts of these three supply chains using data from a simulation of each system. Cattle grain finished in the southern plains are usually ready for processing at about 18 months of age. Feedlot rations might include corn, alfalfa, distiller's grains, and vitamins, minerals, and oils. This feed promotes more rapid weight gain than a grass diet. It also creates marbled meat and a flavor that may be more familiar to consumers. Grass-finished cattle might take longer to reach their target weight. In our simulation, it took 27 months in the northern plains and 30 months in the southwest. Grass finishing may include feeding alfalfa or other hay which may be brought in from outside. Grass finishing in the southwest takes the longest because forage quality in this region can be lower. Also, varying by supply chain option are the use of water and energy, emissions of nitrogen and carbon, and overall cost. Water extracted from underground or surface water that could be used for various purposes is called blue water. In cattle production, most of the blue water used is for irrigating feed crops or pasture. Because of this, grain finishing usually uses more blue water than grass finishing. It's also important to consider the energy footprint of each supply chain. This means all the fuel and energy needed to manage, feed, and transport cattle. In our simulation, grain finishing has the highest energy footprint because of what it takes to grow and transport high-energy rations. Another impact of high-energy rations is reactive nitrogen. Cattle don't process the nitrogen in their feed very efficiently, leading to the release of reactive nitrogen in their waste. Cattle in feedlots consume and release more nitrogen than those on forage-based diets. Northern Plains grasses are higher in protein and therefore contain more nitrogen than those in the arid southwest. So the lowest release of reactive nitrogen takes place during grass finishing in the southwest. A carbon footprint measures all greenhouse gas emissions linked to beef cattle production, including methane production by the cattle and emissions from feed production. Grain finishing is faster than grass finishing, and the quality of the feed is higher, which leads to less methane produced over the lifespan of the animal and thus a smaller carbon footprint. Purchasing feed adds to the cost of keeping cattle. In our simulation, grain finishing costs the most money. As you can see, each production system has trade-offs. Which one is most desirable depends on your goals, priorities, and context. However, understanding these trade-offs can help us to make informed choices. The Sustainable Southwest Beef Project is also studying the impact of different cattle breeds on resource use, outputs, and land. Researchers are evaluating heritage Raramuri Criollo cattle, Angus, and a crossbreed of the two. Crossbreeding ideally carries the benefits of Criollo heritage traits in the cowherd while producing a calf with body characteristics more like its Angus sire. In a simulation comparing breeds, the Criollo Angus crosses had the smallest environmental impact in all three supply chains. More research is needed to see if these findings hold true in other simulations and in field trials. Other factors can also be important when comparing different breeds and supply chains. There's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to production systems. Regardless of context, we hope these perspectives can inform and expand understanding of the options available. To understand more about the trade-offs of these production systems, see our website. Thank you for watching.